this is Mr. Coates, and this is Apes Lecture number 8 on Population Ecology. We have to review what is a population. First of all, a population is a group of organisms of the same species that live in the same area. So down in this slide here, all of the oak trees are the same in the same population for this forest, or all the maple trees, or all the river otters that live in here, or all the trout that live in the stream. So those are populations within that ecosystem. So all the same species in the same area. Now when we talk about populations, we have to talk about population growth. We've talked about population growth with humans, but species are very similar. So we need to look at those. Once again, there are three types of growth. First of all, we have exponential. Exponential growth is growth that is unchecked. You get this J-shaped curve right here, and that shows you that the population is increasing at a certain percentage rate all the time. The next type is logistic growth, which is this right here. What happens is that we get an S curve with logistic growth. Logistic growth shows you exponential in the beginning, but then as a population reaches what we call carrying capacity, then the population levels off. Carrying capacity is the maximum number of organisms of that species that the ecosystem can support. And after a while, certain resources run out or become limited, and so the population reaches carrying capacity. The third type is linear growth. Linear growth is uh, growth that happens with a set amount of growth every time. So in this example here, it looks like we have every year we have 10,000 10, people added to the population every single year. And so what we do is that we get a straight line growth. Very rarely do you see linear growth occur in biological populations. Now we talked about the carrying capacity. Now there are things that control carrying capacity, that get the population to carrying capacity. We call those limiting factors. Now, a limiting factor can be just about anything that controls population. It could be space, it could be the amount of water, it could be the amount of sunlight, the amount of food, it could be the number of predators present, it could be um, the amount of nitrogen present, the amount of phosphorus present. Any of these things can be limiting factors. And the way to look at this is to look at your population as uh, uh, controlled by a barrel. So in the barrel analogy here, we have our population, which is the water that's down in this barrel. And our population can only get as high as the slats that the barrel is made of. So each one of these is a slat that the wooden barrel is made out of. Each slat height represents the amount of that particular limiting factor, or that particular factor. Once again, our barrel can only fill up to the one that is the, hot, the lowest here. We can't get our population any higher than that one. This is potassium here. So this potassium is our most limiting factor because it's the one that really controls the population the most. Now limiting factors can change over time depending on different environmental conditions. For example, water, which is this slat right here, water could decrease and decrease down to this amount down here. All of a sudden then the level in our barrel, or our population level here, would decrease and would come down to this level. Now, when we look at controls on biological populations, we can graph these. And so we have our typical exponential graph. I'm going to change colors here. We have our typical exponential graph in this area. So this area here shows exponential growth here. So that's our typical J-shaped curve. But what causes our curve to, to be a J-shaped in this area? Well, this is biotic potential. Biotic potential is when all the resources are available to the organisms in a non-limited supply. This means that the population can grow uncontrolled. So the biological potential is pushing up the population in this area. Now, when we get up such a high population, after a while, this population starts using all kinds of resources. And so what happens is that we reach what we call environmental resistance. Some of these resources start to become limiting those limiting factors then start pushing that population down, that growth rate down. And so we get environmental resistance. The population then stabilizes here at what we call carrying capacity, also noted as capital K. So these things control population growth. Now what happens if a population exceeds the carrying capacity? It's growing, it's got a huge biotic potential, and it grows and it, then it overshoots Right here, it's carrying capacity. Carrying capacity should be right across here. So when the population overshoots that, what happens? The population then crashes. 
Sometimes a crash can be small. Sometimes you could crash all the way down here and then have to go back up. It just depends on how big the overshoot is here because the bigger the overshoot, the bigger the crash. So this is our crash of this population here. Now, after a while, the population will stabilize and will get closer and closer to carrying capacity as time goes on. But uh, we have to watch out for population overshoot and we have to watch out for population crash. Now, when we also talk about populations, there are reproductive patterns. Okay? There are certain uh, types of species that have certain types of reproductive patterns. And so we call these selected species. And there are two types of selected species that have different reproductive patterns. The first is an R-selected species. So an R-selected species would be like this cockroach here. Some characteristics of R-selected species, they, have, they reproduce very early in life. So they don't have to be very old to reproduce at all. When they do reproduce, they reproduce quickly and often. They have abundant young. So one cockroach female can lay multiple sets of eggs at one time and all of a sudden you can have a hatch out of 20, 30 cockroaches from one female in a short span of time. Most of these R selected species have very short lifespans. They have a high metabolism and uh, don't live very long at all. The other thing is, is that most of them have no parental care whatsoever. So once they lay their eggs, then they kind of go off and do their own thing and they don't come back and take care of their babies. Good examples, uh, other examples of uh, our selective species include uh, like a lot of fish species that lay their eggs in the water and no longer tend them. They'll have millions and millions of eggs at a time and they get fertilized and float around in the ocean for a while until they hatch and the larvae have no parental care. Uh, even clownfish, even though they have minor parental care, once they hatch, those baby clownfish are on their own. Now conversely, the other type are K-selected species. K-selected species, they are a little bit different. They reproduce later in life. So a rhino is a good example of a K-selected species. Most of your large mammals are good examples of K-selected species. They often have few young at a time. Um, sometimes you might have a large mammal have more than one young, like for example pigs and cows, but typically very few young. They also have a longer reproductive cycle. Humans is nine months. Uh, a lot of these larger mammals is longer than a year. Elephants longer than a year. Uh, blue whales close to two years. So a very long reproductive cycle. They are also longer lived. Uh, all these animals live uh, uh, multiple years, whereas a cockroach might live maybe one if it's lucky. They also give good parental care to their young. Often the, the young hatch within the body of the organism and don't go through complex larval stages and are protected. And the parents often take care of them during their life. So the parents will provide food, provide protection until the young are able to survive on their own. Often these species have a more narrow niche. And uh, so that's one of the main differences there. These guys usually have a fairly wide niche and are, and are opportunistic. So that's the difference between an R-selected species and a K-selected species. Now, as we talk about these species, we have to look at survivorship curves. Okay, R-selected species tend to have this green survivorship curve here. What happens is that they have a lot of young all at the very beginning. Most of the animals in the population are very young, so we have an acorn here. Very few of these organisms reach adult life. And so this would be more like an R-selected species here. Then we have this other type up here, where we have very few young. Okay, and our, as, uh, as we get older, we stay alive longer, and then uh, we uh, drop off as we get older. So this is a type 1 survivorship. And then we have a type 2, which is kind of in between, where you might have multiple young and the population curve is actually a negative linear growth curve here for the type 2 survivorship. And so birds are good examples of this. So these are survivorship curves. And so this is mostly R selected species, mostly K. And then you have the ones that are in between in this area. Well, I hope that uh, helps you out learning a little bit about how populations grow and change. Or don't forget your question that you need in order to get your notes graded.